If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. On today's show, I'll be joined by the creator and cast of Spirit to Power, clairvoyant Wendy Pekethley Williamson, radio presenter Raphael Martin, and bereavement counsellor Sammy. So stay tuned. Since the beginning of time, man has created great civilizations which have come and gone. But one thing has stood the test of time for millennia, the martial arts. In the Shaolin temples of China, there are depictions of yoga postures, paintings, uh, diagrams. A lot of people have sort of a misconception about martial arts. A lot of people think martial arts okay, it's all about fighting. But martial arts offers a lot more than that. My perception of martial arts is split into what I perceive to be two halves, yin and yang. Qi for uh, Chinese, Qi for Japanese, or Prana for Indians. I went blind and had to start my life again and met a Kung Fu master who said his system was so effective that even a blind man could do it. The more we discover about ourselves and our own conscious understanding of our place in everything, the more we discover about everything around us. My understanding of the spiritual inspiration of martial arts comes from the necessity for us to find purpose and reason beyond being driven by the survival instinct. Martial arts has disciplined me. I don't drink, I don't smoke. And martial arts has taught me about other cultures. In China, between master and the students, our relationship is really, really close and very special. For Western people, it's very hard to understand. Well, is there a martial artist amongst us who doesn't have Bruce Lee as a hero? There's a lot of times you need to suddenly pull down, focus intensely so that you can do a really good job. And it's the martial arts concentration that's really helped me do that. There are quite a lot of similarities between martial arts and belly dance, like snake energy, animal movements. I do believe in yin and yang, and dark and light, and the flow, and nature, the natural way. I find that true martial artists are in tune with that. So I began to see how these fundamentals underlie all movement. Get your mind right, and your martial art will be right. Everything is interconnected. Everything is linked. Within the movement, you're trying to feel and replicate the spiral that is in all life. The spiral of the galaxy, the pulsing of each atom, and you're trying to feel that within your movement. It's a difficult world out there, full of falsities and lies. Martial arts helps me, A, live with that, and B, try and do something to combat it. We're all part of the same soul. Everything we do has an effect on each other. We're all connected. Enlightenment, that is the ultimate goal. Enlightenment is not coming from the outside of you, it's truly coming inside of you. Gorak Khan is the director and producer of the martial arts film Spirit to Power. Now, Spirit to Power is a feature length docufilm presenting a journey into the spirits of martial arts. I'm also joined by one of the martial artists, Julie Kitchen. Julie is the world champion women's Muay Thai kickboxer and holds 13 titles. Gurk and Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we've just seen the trailer there, so to begin with, uh, just tell us a bit about the trailer. Well, the trailer really is uh, a little bit longer than other trailers out there, which normally have a lot of quick action. I think because the film is more about the meaning of martial arts, it is slightly longer in length, um, and it's really designed to make people feel what I'm saying, as opposed to just kind of being visually enticed. Yeah, I mean, obviously watching that trailer, it looks like martial arts is very spiritual, and would you say that's right, Julie? 
Um, yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> it's not all about just uh, attacking as a lot of people see on the outside. So, yeah, it comes with a whole aura. I mean, so just tell me, I mean, who inspired you for this film? Zara Fithian actually was a big inspiration because I saw her in Turkey when we were there on a holiday actually practicing martial arts. She was uh, there to do a, a, next, a, a tournament. And when I saw her against the sea practicing these martial arts, it just looked incredible. Um, of course, you've got all the, the, the colors of the ocean, the sunset, and, and, um, and all the moves. Yeah, it, it seems to be very much about the arm movements as well. I mean, Julie, how, how's, how's that work with all these movements in the arms? And, what, what, and what's it about? Um, for me personally, I do Thai boxing, so it consists of punches, kicks, knees and elbows. You've got the eight weapons to work with. But uh, it's just an amazing sport, even to watch somebody shadow. It's, it's just like a real nice flow of movements, the, using the whole body, working the arms, the legs, and, you know, it's a great mixture all together. Okay. And um, in being balanced, I mean, you know, that's very important for martial arts, isn't it? And that's something you try to show in the films, isn't it? How, how, it, how it's improved their lives. Because there's one chap on there, I can't <coughs> remember the name, who's got the, the, the disability. Yeah. And, um, you know, his, his story is yeah. inspiring, isn't it, in a sense? Yeah. I mean, there's two... Martial arts is all about sort of uh, balancing the yin and yang, which is the male and female in yourself, and being able to really um, develop your, your power and somebody like Matt Fraser, who is a, um, a challenged actor who suffers from thalidomide, he actually said that martial arts saved his life, um, which is an amazing thing. When you see him have uh, no arms uh, and practice martial arts, it definitely is uh, a, a big sort of... It's, it's incredible. It's so inspiring, isn't yeah. it, that you can mm -hmm. achieve anything. Uh, and, uh, you know, his, his story is one of many, I suppose, that have yeah. taken up the challenge of martial arts mm -hmm. and yeah. gone on to do amazing things, because... Would you say, Julie, that it helps you to sort of become a better person? You know, I've, I've heard the stories where people have stopped smoking, <coughs> they've got up drugs, yeah. they've become a better husband and such. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of stories, and most fighters have got a story behind that they've taken the wrong path in life. But uh, for me personally, I had an amazing upbringing. Uh, I've been happy in my life. I haven't had any wrong roads going down. But for me, it's just um, a real passion and love for the sport, and I didn't actually take it up until I had children. So, so, what, so what age was that then? I mean, um, it wasn't until I was 23. I just I uh, was still holding a little bit of baby weight, so I needed to go along and and try and burn off some calories. And just the love for the sport, you kind of get addicted to it. And then I went to a show, and I was like, oh wow, I could do that. Right, and, and, and you know, I mean, you're now working out. Was it three times a day? Yeah, I own um, my own gym, Touch Cuts Gym, with my husband. So it's a full time job. And being a professional fighter, yes, I'm fighting three times a day. And as you were saying about the balance, it consists of like, you know, the healthy eating, um, you know, the whole way of you live you, your life. You What's know? been one of your favourite sort of tournaments that you've done? Um, Jamaica really sticks out in my mind. We was raising money for the schools out there for um, the young children. They don't have computers, they, they haven't got much money out there. Um, so when I was out there, we was actually allowed to go and visit the schools. Um, I was just one of the fighters along with another fighter who went to meet the children and yeah. look at their schools and knowing that we was raising money for such a good event, you know, it's just another avenue for the sport to go down. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and Gorik, I mean, what, what got you interested in, in martial arts then, to have to, you know, have done this documentary and put your time into it? Well, I think it's just very theatrical. It's uh, got so many different forms, you know, from Tai Chi right through to karate and Muay Thai kickboxing. Um, it's very, very wide-ranging, so that inspired me. Plus, I'm a big fan of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah, is that one of your favourite films, is I it? I think yeah, it's got to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and also, um, I really feel like people need to take up disciplines in their lives to stay focused, because um, I think these days, everybody's sort of talking about the world needs to change and all that kind of stuff, but I think unless you change yourself first, you can't really yeah, do much Yeah, that change has got to come from within, hasn't it? Exactly. I mean, you know, we... we we always yeah. want that change, but we never know how to get quite get there sometimes. Mm. And yeah. people find it through all sorts of different ways. Yeah, exactly. you know, martial arts, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I suppose being, having that balance and everything else, it's important, isn't it, in, in, in life? I mean, what, what do you do to keep centred then? Well, actually, I do I have Tai Chi um, and I do yoga. Um, but everything, really, at the end of the day is pretty much the same. If you are able to have a discipline, Martial arts is definitely um, quite powerful because it's got so many other elements, so the, all the spiritual yeah. side and, and mm. the, the determination, the focus. And yeah. um, 
I think it's... Well, uh, that spiritual side that you just mentioned yeah. there, I mean, that's always been there, hasn't it, with, with the martial arts? I mean, that's present in all the films, isn't it, and, and, and all, all the sort of teachings of it. Where, where does that come from? Um, I think every martial art's got a different background. For instance, um, Thai boxing, I visit Thailand quite a lot, and you really get sucked in by all their culture, and like you say, it goes back years and years, and Thai boxing was used um, on the war fields when they you know, came to war. Instead of using weapons, they'd do Thai boxing. So you go out there, and they've got huge respect for it, um, and you can just see their lifestyle and their culture behind it and you kind of when you're out there you suck it all in and then you come back and you respect the sport even more mm. yeah because it's made you a much more confident person hasn't it oh for sure yes yeah. do you yeah. think that was one of your setbacks in a sense um yeah i'd definitely say it was a weakness um i was so shy as soon as i spoke to someone i'd go red so <laughs> obviously I, I didn't like to speak to people yeah. then and then you hold back so for me it's yeah, and now you speak, speak your mind, basically, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, for instance, I fought Definitely. as well in front of uh, 200,000 people wow. on the king's birthday in Thailand. and it's just That immense. must be amazing to be out there. You, you know, you see it on yeah. TV, don't you? But when you're in front of the camera, when oh, you're out there doing yeah. it, you know, the roar from the audience and yeah. everything else must be incredible. Oh, yeah, that's an, just an amazing number of people. I'd yeah. never believe that I'd stand up. Yeah. Now, I've got to mention, you're, you're a holistic practitioner, is that right? As well, yes. As well? Yeah, yeah. And so where's this fit in? Does that fit into the documentary at all? Have you brought that in as an as a element? Well, I think being a holistic practitioner, I'm interested in the whole picture. And I think with martial arts, it's kind of one of those things where it, it's not just, a, again, it's not just about fighting. It's about all the other components of, of martial arts, the meditation, the, the mind power, the practice, all of these things that uh, build build you up in your day and um, I think that's that's the uh, sort of foundation of any holistic medicine anyway uh, it's looking at all the layers and kind of getting to the point of it yeah because so. you, you, there was you, your grandfather was was he into holistic medicine or there was yeah. some sort of famous yeah. twist with him as well wasn't there well my grandfather was a very famous Yunani medicine uh, practitioner um, and he treated the Nizam of Hyderabad, who at one time was the world's richest man and the, the president of India at that time. And Yunani medicine is really a, a, a medicine that's based on sort of administering, sorry, administering pearls and minerals and gold and silver and all these kind of special compounds, but yeah. like homeopathy. And it, funny enough, it comes from the ancient Greeks. And martial arts, of course, stems from India, from thousands of years ago and obviously it traveled to Japan, China, Europe, yeah. um, but using the same sort of holistic principles, you know. So what do you say, Julie, um, for, for what, you know, the, 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 my, the my boxing, Thai boxing that you yeah. do, um, it's really about pushing women in the sport, isn't it, and as, as such? Because um, they're underrated, aren't they, in, in this sport? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me personally as well, my journey through, it's been a real upwards battle really especially being a female in a combat sport um, so I you know I get lots of messages every day off other females saying you really inspire me it's good to see a female at the top of her game as well and so yeah I, isn't that great do yeah. you know what I mean to, yeah. be, to, be, to, be, to be doing that I mean yeah. uh, what would you say though as, as being one of your biggest setbacks in, in the sport so far and how did you overcome that would you say um, probably one of them where I live I live in um, Cornwall so I'm so far away from all the big cities in England and even to get an air to an airport for me to travel to another country it's like four or five hours drive um, so that's been quite a big setback being at the bottom of the country and then um, you've got the battle of being a female as well and yeah, promoters wanting to put a female yeah, yeah. Yeah. on a combat sport yes. yeah I mean it's so unfair isn't it? I mean just because you know a woman wears a skirt and a man wears trousers yeah it makes two different wages yeah, I mean, yeah. How, how can that be justified in sport nowadays um, I'm, I, I really don't know but it is Can't and be. all we can do is like look to the future and hopefully it'll even yeah. out really yeah. yeah, and that's what you're trying to push as well. For sure, Cause, yeah. Because you've got two daughters, you're, you're a mother as well, aren't you? Two yeah, daughters. Yeah, I'm a mother of twin girls, Amra and Leia, they're age 12. Right. Um, and like I said, I didn't start until they was around two years old. But yeah. yeah, all we can do is keep pushing the sport. I train just as hard as the guys. Uh, I fight just as hard as them as well. So one day, hopefully, I, I would love to see you know, the females and males on the equal. And, and obviously having that, that fan support that you've got yeah. and the family support, the family support is really important, oh, isn't really it? Oh, really important, you, you're, yeah. You really need that, especially doing what you're doing. Yeah, I wouldn't be where I was today. 
I mean, another thing as well, my, my coach is my husband, so we do live and breathe the sport, and I'm lucky when I go away and compete. You know, not only have I got my coach there, but I've got my husband as well. So you're both into the same sport? Yes. So, so you know, with it, with it be, being involved in, you know, what you class as a spiritual sport as well, I mean, I mean you must have a lot of uh, common things, you know, things in common with that spirituality as well. Yeah, I mean, he can totally see where I'm coming from when I'm about to go for a bout. Yeah. A lot of it is preparing mentally, not just physically. And, um, you know, for me, I focus on that quite highly. Right, okay. Okay, so you're one of the main actors as well, one of the actors, shall I say, in, in the documentary, Spirit to Power. And uh, when is Spirit to Power released? Well, Julie is one of the guest, uh, um, right, guest okay, appearances okay. in the film, but yeah. one of the top guest well, the top <laughs> appearances, guest, but they're well, all yeah, full of I, world champions uh, anyway. Well, I mean, there was a you know, special yeah, 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 queen of, of Muay Thai. Yeah, my queen tie, of Muay Thai, yeah. yeah, exactly. Boxing, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's got a lot of world champions in it anyway, yeah. a lot of masters, world champions. It's got Cynthia Rothrock, who is the legendary queen of martial arts, so to speak, from uh, the States. Um, and, of course, Zara Fithian and, and lots of other people. And the film is due to be released um, in early 2012, and it will be an online um, release, so it'll be download, DVD, streaming. And, and really, I hope it will inspire lots of women to get up there and do, because I do have a particularly strong yeah. uh, female cast. Cecily Fay as well. Um, she's, I think, the only swordswoman in the UK who is able to do what she can do, and uh, she's um, brilliant. Um, and I'm hoping that lots of women will look at it and think, well, it's not... Martial arts is not just for guys. It's not just about fighting. There's an art to it, and um, yeah. it and that, will make really me stronger it, as a person. Yeah. For sure. yeah. And if you yeah. look at someone like Julie, <clears throat> who's completely feminine to look at, but you see her in a ring and she's completely, you know, lethal, mm. um, it just goes to show that really it's how far you want to take it. But yeah. uh, it will help people um, get very strong in their minds, in their bodies, and especially children. I've got Jack yeah. Griffiths, who is a young, yeah. and he's amazing. Yeah. He's uh, the he was voted by Sony Pictures as best under 18 martial artist and he's since been picked up by lots of people. He might be holding the Olympic torch. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. And he's an inspiration to young people, just like Julie's uh, daughters, you know, yeah, taking absolutely. young people forward into such an ancient thing like martial arts and making it much more contemporary. And making it accessible and as well. And accessible, yeah, exactly. Which is really important, isn't it? And does it support a charity as well? Is there a sort of charity? Well, we'd like to support um, Medicine Sans Frontier, but we are thinking about other charities as okay. well. And pre, pre the Olympics, I think it's a, a good time really to get martial arts out there and into people's, people's minds. Well, thank you yeah. both so much for joining us today. Thank, so, you. thank you very much. After Thank the break, you. I'll be speaking to clairvoyant Wendy Pekethley Williamson and radio presenter Raphael Martin. Stay tuned. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and the More Show website.